Hey, KM6LYW radio viewers, we're in the KM6LYW backyard here today. Uh, we're going to play with a different band today. We're going to play with the 2 nanometer band. It's emanating from a big source. It's exactly one astronomical unit away, a, a large fusion reactor over there. And we're going to see if we can capture some energy from it. Um, if you're not a nerd, that means we got solar panels, and we're going to see if we can charge batteries to run our amateur radios. Um, first, I'd like to thank our patrons. I wish I could hold up a slide here that says, you know, has all the patrons' names. Thank you guys for contributing to the channel, uh, KM6LYW, on Patreon.com. If you can contribute a few bucks, you get early access to videos and software, uh, amateur radio software, uh, for, that, that this channel is based upon. So, solar power. Um... We're going to do it. There's the right way, the wrong way, and, and my way. And, I, and there's usually three mutually exclusive things that we're going to talk about a little bit. I learned the hard way on how to do a lot of these things. So I got a lot of extra stuff, some stuff I need, some stuff I don't. Um, ultimately, if you need solar panel for your radio, if you need solar power for your radio, you need a panel. Hey, you've got those. We need a solar charge controller. Got it. And we're going to need a storage, some sort of battery. And we've got three different kinds of batteries we can play with here. And we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each. Yeah, solar is expensive. Uh, you get kind of get what you pay for. When it, uh, but I'm cheap and lazy. You, know, you can call me chazy. Uh, so this is kind of a, a cost-effective uh, solar panel solution. My setup that I really like is probably, uh, I don't know, it's under 150 bucks uh, for a pretty decent setup that will allow me pretty much to uh, maybe not contest all day, but definitely operate for a few hours outside while the sun's up. Um, you know, if you're if you're you're hammering down on CW or in digital modes full time, uh, you got a high duty cycle. Yeah, you might need a bigger setup. If you're just casually talking on slow scan on a side single sideband, you're not using that much power. You can talk all day on on just some of the stuff that you're looking at here. All right, so solar panels. Let's start with the, the big thing. Um, so solar panels, you can get all kinds of places. I get them on Amazon for better or worse. Uh, I like uh, this one here, it's uh, by Rich Solar, and this is, if I remember right, a 50 watt panel. That means it actually produces 30 watts. So when they say 50 watts, uh, that's under extremely ideal conditions. That's when you're at the equator looking directly at the sun. You might get 50 watts out of this the day it was manufactured. So count on 30 watts from a 50 watt panel. Um, additionally, the more traditional uh, panel is this guy. This is a 100 watt panel. And honestly, they're the same price, but this one's brutally heavy and it produces twice as much power. So the, the 100 watt panel produces 60 watts. Imagine that, right? The, the math is easy. So this thing's huge. And there's a difference between uh, monocrystalline and regular crystalline cells. I, you know, I don't think the difference is that huge. There is a slight uh, price difference. But I like this guy uh, because it keeps my battery charged for my operating habits. Um, that includes digital modes. And it's super light, so you can take this on soda. Um, it's just got a couple of cables that come out of it. It's super light, you can clip it to a backpack, which is what I've done here. I and mean, again, that's rich solar, and that's gonna be 50 watt panel, and it's about 75 bucks. So count on $75 for your panel. Um, if you got a more permanent installation, get that big heavy one, it's probably more hail proof. It's got like tempered glass on it. So that's the panels. Make sure you get the ones that uh, produce about 18 to 21 volts. It should say 18 volts is usually the sweet spot for a lot of panels. If you get a solar panel, for example, that has a USB port in it, you know, this is a little cheap one that you can get. This is actually nice for what it does. But if it has a USB port, it's not the solar panel that we're talking about. It doesn't use a solar charge controller. That's just for your phone and maybe little backup batteries. Okay, so the panel we got... Uh, we need the, the, the other of the three things. Remember, we need the panel, the charge controller, and the batteries. Um, this is a solar charge controller. There's two kinds of these. This is the cheap one. Remember, I'm cheap and lazy, so this is the one you can get on Amazon. This is like 15 bucks, and it's called Solar Charge Controller. Literally says that. Uh, for all powers, and it has some cool USB ports. It has three, uh, six holes, actually. There's two, uh, three pairs of wires. There's the... The solar panel connection, you know, positive and negative. There is the battery connection, positive and negative. And then there's the load, and that's your radio. We'll just call that your radio. So that's what a solar charge controller is. Remember I said there's two kinds of these. This one's called pulse width modulated. It's nowhere near as efficient as the other kind of solar charge controller, which is uh, MPPT. Um, 
maximum power point it, it's a uh, it, it helps keep your solar panel at an efficient voltage while it's drawing so that it's more efficient but remember this is about fifteen dollars and the more expensive uh, uh, non-pulse width modulated uh, controller is about a hundred and fifteen dollars I'm totally happy with this. Yeah, it's probably not as efficient, but honestly, the, the size of the batteries I'm driving with oversized panels, I don't need that much current to charge these batteries. I might charge them too fast. That's solar charge controllers. Two different kinds, big difference in price. All right, so I've got three different battery chemistries here. And what, what I do like about this cheap blue one, it does drive or charge all three battery chemistries here. Um, so we have lithium polymer, these are like hobby grade. Um, you can get these at hobby stores. You can get them at Hobby King. Um, I was into RC cars and airplanes for a while, so I had a lot of these laying around. And I, I kind of put two of these together here, and then uh, I put uh, battery management controllers on them. You need to put those on because if you undercharge any kind of lithium battery, you can do some pretty serious damage to it, and, and including fire. You know, so, so lithium batteries are you know some aren't like lead acid where you can you know, just beat them up. Um, they, they can be dangerous. So that's a lithium polymer battery. Um, these are affordable, again, available at hobby stores. The only downside to these is their nominal voltage for a three cell battery is 11.1 .1 volts. If you've got a radio that really wants 13.8 volts, these are gonna, aren't gonna be powerful enough. Yeah, they'll drive it, but you're gonna be probably transmitting at half power. Yeah, the Yaesu 991 is a good example of that. If you undervolt it, the power just falls off pretty quick. Maybe other radios are okay with that, but this is lithium polymer. Voltage is kind of low. I mean, you could get a four cell version of this. this. These are three cells. The four cell is actually over 16 volts, which exceeds the maximum voltage for most radios. Again, you really want to target 13.8 volts for our amateur radio. So let's lithium polymer. Um, let, let's, that takes us over to this guy, which is really heavy. This is a sealed lead acid battery. I've got a charge controller like you just saw bolted to the top of this one. It's kind of dedicated and it's in the lead acid mode. Um, these are cheap. You can get this for 20 bucks. Um, this one is 16 amp hours. And by the way, this one is uh, two 5,000, so that's 10 amp hours. This is 10 amp hours, this is 16 amp hours. That's the capacity. Uh, it says 16 amp hours, but if it's lead acid, you really only get half of that because um, you're not supposed to drain these any more than half way. So this is really only eight usable amp hours. It's dreadfully heavy. Uh, the voltage is okay. It's not as bad as lithium polymer. I mean, you know, it doesn't, it, it'll sag down, uh, but it won't really go sag down below 12 volts. Um, so this one's kind of, you know, if you don't have to carry it, it's okay. If you're on a real budget, get lead acid, that's okay. Uh, just be mindful, but uh, don't discharge it all the way. And they also call this a deep cycle battery. Um, they also call this a glass mat battery. Um, <laughs> just don't discharge it. <laughs> when they say deep cycle, they mean half cycle. That's what that, that's what that means. So this is a, like a, a deep cycle glass mat lead acid battery. And then lastly, the one I really like the most, um, this one's probably about 60 bucks. Now, there's other vendors that, that make these that charge a lot more for these, and they're probably arguably better batteries, but this one is lithium iron phosphate. And this too, this is also a 16 amp hour battery. What's different between this one and the lead acid is you can drain this one completely flat. Uh, you can actually get 16 amp hours of this. Uh, this is about 60 bucks. I've got a dedicated charge controller on it. In fact, it's uh, it's charge controlling right now. You can see it's at 12.8 volts. It's actually connected to this guy over here. The interface is simple. You press this twice and you can see the charge current going to the battery. There's not a lot of sun on it, so there's only 200 milliamps uh, going into this battery. But this battery is uh, particularly made by M-I-A-D-Y. M-I-A-D-Y, I have no idea how to say that. Uh, it's really popular on Amazon. Um, if you're a battery aficionado and you know a lot about lithium iron phosphate batteries, uh, yeah, this probably doesn't have the best cells in it, uh, but if you look at the prices, $60 is a deal. And I, I use this all day uh, with this uh, 30, uh, with this pan the 50 watt panel producing 30 watts, and it, it never drains. You know, maybe if I'm in digital modes all day, you know, I, I, I might, there might be a concern. But uh, this is my favorite battery, a lithium iron phosphate. Now, why not just get the biggest solar panel you can afford? Um, honestly, this big, gigantic, heavy one uh, is too much of a pa uh, panel for. 
uh, a couple of these batteries. So we want to tra talk about charge rates a little bit. You can't just charge these instantly. You can't just dump you know 100 amps into these and charge them. They'll, 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 I don't know, they'll potentially explode, right? So there's something called a C rating for batteries, and each battery has a chemistry has its own C rating. And the C rating is just a a fancy way to say how fast you can charge the battery. So this one, for example, is 10 amp hours. That's its capacity. Now the C rating for charging for lithium polymer is one, C rating of one. Um, so that means if you have a 10 amp hour battery, you can charge it at uh, 10 amps. If, uh, hopefully that makes sense. So if it's basically you take the amp hours and, and turn that into amps and that's how fast you can charge something. So this has a C rating of one. So I could charge this at 10 amps. Uh, this big panel that generates six amps, no problem. I can dump six amps into this, not a problem. Uh, this guy, lithium iron phosphate, it depends on who you ask, but this manufacturer says this has a C rating of 0.5. So we want to use half of the rated capacity on this guy. He's 16 amp hours, that means we can charge him at 8 amps. Um, again, either panel can charge this, um, including the, uh, the 30 watt, well, <laughs> 50 and 100. Uh, this produces 3 amps. In, in reality, three amps, so it, it can totally charge the, these lithium style packs. The other one produces six amps uh, in, in we're at my latitude and can totally, it's, it's under the C rating charge rating for these. Lead acid, on the other hand, is a 0.1 C rating. So let's see, this battery, I actually didn't read it. Let's say it's 16 amp hours, uh, just like this guy. Uh, a 0.1 uh, C rating, charge rating, would mean 1.8 amps would be kind of the maximum rate at which you can charge a 16 uh, amp hour battery because the C rating is 0.1. So these need to be charged slowly. So if you were to get a huge panel like this gigantic one, this 100 watt panel, which produces six amps, um, you'd be vastly exceeding the charge maximum charge capacity for a lead acid uh, deep cycle battery. But for lithiums, they charge really fast and you can get pretty darn big panels. Um, so for when you hook your radio up to it, remember I said there's the, uh, the solar panel, the, the battery itself, and the load. Um, when you wire these up, do use good gauge wire like that your radio would use, like 12, 14 gauge wire. Additionally, um, these aren't fused by default. Now the solar charge controllers will cut the current if they're overvolted. Um, like for this one, this one has a 45 amp output capacity. Um, I don't know where this charge controller stops, but I think this will stop at about 25 amps. It'll just cut the it'll just cut the uh, source and disconnect your radio momentarily if it's drawing too much current. So in a sense, this is kind of like a fuse, but I still wouldn't trust it. Um, go ahead and buy these little uh, blade style automotive fuses. Um, I don't know what, how many amps I got this for. Um, you know the. The house you save could be your own, right, when it comes to fire. So this is a 30 amp blade fuse. Go ahead and put that in with this battery. You know, if there's ever a short for any reason, um, you know, it's either this will explode or your radio will explode. This is a lot cheaper, so use that. All right, so this is the traditional, what I call 18 volt style batteries that need charger controllers. Now, if you've got like an HT or something, yeah, if it's a 12 volt HT, sure, go ahead and plug it into these. Um, for if you, if you have like a cell phone or something, yeah, you can charge it off of the USB ports that are in these charge controllers. That's another really cool feature. Like when you're in the field, you're going to have an HT, you're going to have a cell phone. Um, let's say you don't want to drag these around, like I do hiking, desolation, wilderness, and this is my only radio. Um, this is all I have. I have a, a DigiPi and for packet and email and SMS. Um, and I'm way up in the middle of nowhere, there's no power, and I'll be up there for almost a week at a time. This is my radio. Of course, this little battery isn't going to last. Now, I'm not going to drag this stuff up on an expedition hike. What I am going to bring, and in fact, this actually has made the trip, is a solar panel like this. Remember I said don't buy the one that has the USB connection? Well, in this case, we want the one with the USB connection. And we're going to use a different battery altogether. These are probably ones you're totally familiar with. This is a backup battery for your cell phone. And we're going to connect it with a USB cable. And we're going to leave this on our backpack. Now the capacity of this is about half of a phone charger. So let's say your phone charger at home charges at 2 amps. This is going to charge at half speed. And that's assuming it's you know, facing right at the sun. It's assuming you've got an efficient battery. I like the ones from Anchor. Um, if you wanted something that charges faster, um, it's ultimately heavier, they make a double version of this, the Renogy charger. 
Um, I think the single guy is about 30 bucks. Uh, this guy is probably twice that. <laughs> Imagine that, right? <laughs> That's two of them stuck together. That's actually pretty cool. And then you, all day you charge this like your gas tank. And then uh, you can charge your phone off of this overnight, or you can charge your radio off of this overnight, which is what I would do. Um, so let's say I've got my Yesu radio and this, you know, you need to make an adapter cable and make sure that uh, your radio, you have an up converter. So this is a five volt battery. And this up converter, um, what I, I've looked at a lot of these, you need to up convert them to 12 volts or something your radio likes. Um, these make a ton of RF noise, so you're not going to actually operate your radio, so you want to do this while you're sleeping. Uh, but honestly, the up converter or uh, buck converter that I like is the one made by Baofeng. So get a uh, USB adapter for your Baofeng radios and then mangle the other end uh, until it fits <laughs> into your radio. I really do like these. I, I know it sounds silly to just uh, buy a Baofeng uh, USB adapter, but get one of these. You know, I made the, I made the cable really short because I count grams, right, when I'm backpacking. So th that's how this works. That's how we're going to charge our radio and or our cell phone is with these gas tanks, these little backup batteries, and a, and a really small USB-powered or USB-based solar panel. All right, so that's pretty much all I know about solar stuff, which isn't a lot. I mean, we could go on and on talking about solar efficiencies and, you know, living off-grid. Um, if you're hiking or whatever, it, I think it's critical. That's that's why I had to learn this stuff. Um, if you live in a third world country like California where there's rolling blackouts, or maybe you just want to operate outside and you don't have an extension cord long enough, look into getting a cheap solar setup. Um, I think the whole, if you just want the panel, the controller, and a battery, I'd recommend this one. I think we're looking at... Uh, maybe 150 bucks at most um, and check out the usual sources i think all of this you can get on amazon all right guys this is the power this is how we get power to our radios uh using the uh, just using that uh, reactor that's uh, exactly one astronomical unit away okay, this is km6 lyw radio and i'm clear <laughs>